So what I want is for our songs, what we want, sorry, is for our songs to be vehicles for one other person in our crowd to come up to us and be like, I feel ugly. I go, come on, let's, let's have a cup of tea. <laughs> but, let's all feel ugly together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's the point. Yeah. To hooked on Sonic on CJLO 1690 AM, and we're joined in the studio for with Idols. Hey, yeah. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves and say what you do? This is Joe. That's Mark. He's uh, the top 100 frontman of all time. This top is, 10 current. This top is 10 Mark. current. Yeah. yeah, top 10 current. I what? Mean. What number right now? Probably 10. Probably <laughs> if, <laughs> if I was in the 10, but I'm not. I reckon I'm in the top 25. I reckon you probably are. Guaranteed, actually. some people above us. Do you want to hear them? Go above for me, it. sorry. Which one? Who would be above you? <laughs> who York. are the ones that you need to take down? Who? None of them. Okay. Um, There's respect always. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tom York. Yeah. Yanis from Foles. Elias from Ice Age. Who else did we say? Uh, we did Elias, say, but maybe. I Nick, don't know. Nick Cave. Oh, Christ. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, I forgot his name. Mez from Life. Yeah, do you think the Mickey Mouse gloves can help put you above? Actually, I was going to say, I didn't come dressed as a Disney character, <laughs> for those on camera. I have eczema, and I've just put some ointment oh, okay. on. You, you don't have to do that. Oh, okay. Like, oh, he's well, disabled. Now, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make jokes about his Disney gloves. So I put them on, because I've got this new ointment from America, right? Yeah. And it's super greasy, so uh-huh. I look like a pervert. <laughs> so I put the gloves on <laughs> to, look, like like <laughs> to look like a stalker. Do you know they're less intimidating? I feel I feel those are less stalkery. They're more they're more kind of like happy jazz hand gloves. I wish I'm not gonna fucking you're not get gonna, away with. You're not gonna do the jazz hands? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. You look like you're on the rob. Oh uh, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, snooker man. <laughs> That's true. He is uh, traffic police officer. Mime. Mime. Yep. Yes. All right, so. Let's talk about you guys. You've been on tour in North America right now. Yeah. Uh, the shows have all been selling out. Yeah. And how does that feel to be playing to sell those shows in North America like this? Like, you know, it's not close to home. Um, uh, I mean, to put it in context, I guess, if if they weren't selling out, it would still be quite, um, obviously, a new experience, but a really bizarre yeah. one. Yeah. Um, you kind of localize yourself, as, as anyone does. You feel part of a small place you mm-hmm. have boundaries with your perception you don't go outside of them other than as a like the world's there but as an artist you kind of you only know a certain amount um, or you consider it at least so like we would have come over here and still been like wow we're playing in canada yeah of like, course that's of crazy. course um so really beyond that it it, it f- it's equal parts ridiculous it's like crazy. It just feels like a dream, but also feels very normal. Is it your first time in North America? Yes. Yeah. But because everyone's so kind of elatory and responsive and warm and caring, yeah. it feels like home. Yeah. But because of that, when you step back, you're like, we're not home. Yeah. We're like far from. So um, it's been wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's honestly like, that's not like media crap. That's true. Like, um, it's just been the best experience. You're, you're coming to North America for the first time to present, you know, your music, your art, your performance and everything, mm-hmm. and then not really expecting to receive that sort of response and then receiving that response on top of everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like... It's mind-blowing. Go on. It's mind-blowing. Oh, I thought you said it's my go. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's my go. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Like, I mean, the first show we had and then people were singing the words back, that yeah. is just weird because how did they hear that? Yeah. How did they hear it enough? How did they bother listening to it enough? There's a thing, the it's like a network of computers that <coughs> goes everywhere, right? It's called the internet. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, is it, is just, it weird to be promoting an album that already is like a year old for you absolutely guys? Absolutely not. Because like, no, not at all? No. Yeah. Like, it doesn't get old. Mm-hmm. I mean, it will when we are um, in the midst of the second album, we're playing that. To go back to a, to the first album would be yeah. weird. But it's very much, we're very much in it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a relevant piece of art for us. And we are now... Put, you know, we're we're 
we're playing it to to a new audience. Yeah, I think and that's that, a big thing. Is like the I was going to say that playing it to a different kind of culture of yeah. people and seeing how they react to it and how they react to different songs. So like, like different songs would be more popular or get a different kind of vibe from the room. So that that's that's nice. And that's got to breathe. Play things slightly differently. That's got to well. breathe new life into some of the songs. Like yes, yeah. Steve. Even if you're a little bit tired of playing them, we too. never get tired of it. I'm not really? lying. Yeah, no, yeah no. It's, it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, know? we love the songs and it changes with every one. It's not like oh, we're in America now. It's different. Oh, it's like we play it in Bath in England and then you play it in London. It's it's different. Yeah, um, and we have made sure we've maintained a sense of urgency with what we're doing with with everything we do if there's something there that becomes numb we stop doing it mm -hmm. there's certain songs we're not going to play anymore because we don't feel it what's the point yeah because it's like we're offering something we're trying to be vulnerable to our audiences and open up but if it, if that's a dishonest exchange the audience will read it a mile off and they do they, they chew you up mm -hmm. you can't you can't lie to audiences it doesn't especially in our sort of music doesn't work yeah so like we just do what we love so it will never get old at all yeah so we were talking about how performing the music that you guys have written the uh, you know the album how it can be a very kind of cathartic um intense experience especially with the crowd especially with the content from the music i, I was wondering you know a lot of the themes on the album deal with there's a lot of themes of grief, of anger, frustration. There's a lot of sarcasm too on the record. To kind of dig up some of these topics or the feelings, you know, the one thing that's been talked about a lot about the record, which I don't really want to go too much about this because it's been spoken about enough already, is about how a lot of the album subject deals with uh, the passing of your mother uh, and mm -hmm. how she dealt with a long-term illness. And uh, myself personally, it, it, it did connect a lot with me because my father as well, he passed away after a long-term illness. It was very hard watching him suffer, especially during the last few years. Yeah, There's a there's an interesting there's a comforting sense in hearing uh, music or art that kind of deals with something like that, that you can kind of personally relate to. Yeah. And that's something too, that a lot of people can personally relate to. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that can also help in terms of connecting with the crowd, especially in a very, you know, you could use the word visceral in a very visceral kind of manner in a very kind of intense, deep kind of manner. Um, is that can that be overwhelming to you can that be a little bit too intense for you guys um no mm -hmm. no like, like i've always been quite robust um as a person so i don't i don't find that there is too much emotion to give really and uh the more the more you you are the more catharsis the more outlet more outbursts of emotion and unrelented whatever the more relieving it is the more you're vulnerable and the more you share the more you open up the actually the more relief you feel so i think that the tighter you grip on to what you're feeling the that's that's when it becomes overwhelming you don't you know that's what therapy is catharsis is a release um of sharing your grief or your anger or whatever it is um so I think that's a big, big thing. Like it's a big problem in Western culture is that we've got a real kind of like stilted view of things like death and suffering, even mm -hmm. though it's like one of the surest things that is going to happen in someone's lifetime. Yeah, and it's like I think that's an important thing for us is to that should be a communal thing. That should be something that people get together and talk about and talk about the ups and downs of it and the the way that grief is such a like a strange experience where you have these like you know you still laugh at stuff but you feel horrendous or you know you know how you relate to things when you look at something and it reminds you of something it's important to discuss that because that's how we learn from a shared experience is you know Joe the way Joe has dealt with grief has taught me a lot and taught people that come to our shows and people that listen to our music a lot and I think that's that's what you know everyone should be here to do is like I've I've gained this experience. Let's share this experience, and then we can make it a better experience and a much more. Yeah, yeah. I by mean, putting yourself so, you know, obviously by sharing with your friends and by sharing with with the therapist, like you're saying, you did. At this point now, you're sharing with everybody, mm -hmm. and you're you're basically opening yourself up to anybody who would want to come in 
to you know what is kind of like your little corner mm-hmm. how difficult was that for you to do was it was it not difficult was it something that you wanted to do and then even after you chose to do it now that you get that response is there some points where you kind of feel that this might be a little bit too much and then for you guys as well too i mean i'm sure this kind of opens things up for you guys also or a thought process for you of things that you're thinking about now too or how you might have to deal with things you know god forbid in the future Uh, but the inevitableness of it all also you know these are some real existential things that it can kind of bring up yeah i mean it's i think one of the things that um i'm blessed with is is like uh an ability to not worry too much about the bigger picture yeah but like micromanage see as long as the end of my arm I, I put it on in the songs because I wanted to I wanted to be as honest and as open as possible because I realized that that's what I enjoyed the most it's not for everyone there's other channels in in, in, in the arts to express yourself um, you know, abstract expressions and like I, I watched a documentary on Francis Bacon called The Brush With Violence where I suddenly appreciated his art so much more because I understood I, I learned more about his life and who he was as a person so suddenly all the kind of nightmarish abstractions in it made a lot more sense mm-hmm. it's more humane but for me it's a very like jackhammer like short sentence burst of honesty that I, I work with but I didn't think about oh my goodness like hundreds or thousands of people are going to hear my lyrics and I'm opening myself up to that um, but as soon as it did become that mm-hmm. it, it became something even more easy and more beautiful because if you think about it like it's just it's not a problem half then it's like a problem one thousandth <laughs> like it's just like ah and you know what it's, it's such a wonderful feeling to be able to Put it out there, because von like one of the worst things, the most caustic things in Western culture, is I don't want to share that with someone because I might be a burden on them. Like that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. If you feel bad and you need to talk to someone, that's the first thing you should feel free to do. You should be able to go up to someone and be like, I just feel lonely. I feel sad. I feel ugly. I feel stupid. Whatever. And I'll tell you, I guarantee you, not one person will be like, oh, not today, mate. They'll be like. Oh you're not stupid why do you feel stupid it's that easy but people have this thing in their fucking brain where they just feel like uh, I, I, I don't I don't, don't want to like you know they're busy mm-hmm. it's crazy but like so what I want is for our songs what we want sorry is for our songs to be vehicles for one other person in our crowd to come up to us and be like I feel ugly I go, come on let's Let's have a cup of tea. <laughs> Let's all feel ugly together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's the point. Yeah. I am not an average f- front man in the sense that, you know, no one's going to put me on the front cover of a fashion magazine or something. <laughs> you know, like I'm a short guy with club feet and eczema gloves and, you know, a drinking problem. The gloves are fashionable, though. Danke schön. Um, but but I'm hoping that because I've been given a vehicle to to speak out and people listen and get paid for it, the other people be like, oh, he, he looks worse than I do, so I can feel alright talking about things. Yeah, yeah. That's it, basically. Uh, there are a lot of people who are kind of getting into punk music via your band now, and those are people who aren't familiar with that sort of sense of community or how those shows can be like this big kind of community melting pot. Mm. And um, that's kind of opening their eyes to this sort of, you know, it's it's a performance, obviously, but it's a very uh, uh, a very welcoming kind of. We're all part of this performance, you know. It's just it's just not five of us on the stage. It's everybody in this room, yeah. and that's usually how those kind of pow, uh, you know the punk house shows, basement shows, how those all kind of formed with that sort of sense of everybody's kind of part of this. It's there's no real kind of line between the band and the crowd. And so you have like those new people who are coming to this. And at the same time, you have like the old grizzled punk vets who, um, who are, who are still flocking to your band because you're bringing out feelings of what they had with bands that they loved or, um, you know, like the, the, um, 
like the scene standard type bands from from days of yore mm-hmm. that were doing the same sort of thing. So it's interesting to see that you have both those two groups agreeing on your band. Mm. Uh, and what I was curious about, and this is something that I usually ask most people, especially when they have um, a record that has, you know, we were talking about the lyrics and everything like that and how you connect with people, et cetera. Is it, uh, how, how, how does it feel? Is it interesting? I'm always curious to see how it feels on behalf of like the musicians and the songwriters. When, you know, you put this song out, it's very personal to you guys. You know, you put your blood, sweat and everything into it. Uh, and it, it has a personal meaning to you, and then you put it out there, and then someone who's listening to it then, it now becomes something personal to them. Mm-hmm. And then they come to you, and that song really at that point does not belong to you anymore. You know, It belongs to this person, it belongs to that person. And I'm sure that really is the end goal, but I'm wondering how, like, how does that feel to you when, when you experience that from people, when they come up to you and talk to you about your music and what it is to them then at that point? I mean, I, I, I very much take a stance that like as soon as we've gotten through the recording process and mixed it and got it to the point that it's what we want to convey, it's definitely no longer our <laughs> yeah. the, the record. I think whenever it's live, it's 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 something different because then that, that becomes the platform for the person who owns the song now mm-hmm. is conveying it. We're, con- we're, you know, we're conveying what we our interpretation of what it is and then you've got an audience member who is thinking about it and perceiving it in a different way and singing it back to you and singing too. it back to you yeah. and whenever you get that meat that's whenever that that's whenever the it becomes the most amazing part of doing it you know it's like yeah you were saying about it being a, a performance like i don't really performance kind of feels a bit loaded to me it, it does kind of, yes like it, it, there's a, con- a sense of it being contrived whereas like I, I really think that like whenever we're on stage we're just like i mean i'm a very dramatic person i suppose but like yeah. um it's kind of like a, i like to feel that what we're doing is an exaggerated version of what the room is feeling at that moment yeah. in time yeah it's, 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 it's very much like um Spont- not spontaneous because obviously we practice but like I think the, w- the best way to describe it is we practiced and practiced and practiced so that the gig the, the shows are automatic in the sense that the instrumentation mm-hmm. and the, the vocals side of it are rehearsed to the point where we can switch off and just be reactionary to the environment mm-hmm. we're in and enjoy the crowd I'm not there thinking, oh, what's the next line? I forget lines, mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter. Yeah, um, we we we're we're just a well-oiled machine to the point where we're no longer mechanical. We just enjoy the humanity of the shows, which is why they're often seen as chaotic and and. But you know, so that there is a performance there, but we practice the performance side enough that we can switch off and become very much automatic and enjoy it and. I think that's the key yeah. to where we've got to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I like ownership wise. Like the whole our, our ethos behind ownership is that you know there is no ownership. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a song. Like, yeah, it, it, it's an exchange, isn't it? It's like also my lyrics aren't. They're not linear. They're they're, they're supposed to be abstractions. Yeah. So I would rather someone came to me and told me what that song meant to them and it was completely different to what I meant, mm-hmm. you know? Even even if it was something contradictory into my belief system that I, that was dangerous, you know? I think that's that thing, it's not, you know, it's it's art. Like, I, I don't, I never read the, the blurbs of my favorite paintings when I'm in yeah. exhibitions. Yeah. I just look at it and absorb it and take what I want out of it. Yeah. It might sound selfish or whatever, but I'm selfish, <laughs> so it's fine. But um, yeah, I think it's it's important for people to know that. Like, I'm not trying to spell. I'm, in fact, another point to make is that, that as we've evolved, like I'm not going to stay like this. But at the moment, I'm very much like writing very, very like more basic, more like simplistic lyrics, as naive as I can be to be, because being naive in such a critical culture. I think is is the most vulnerable I can be, which is important because I want people to feel like they can also be naive and also have fun. 
and also enjoy the art that I'm making. So I think that's where we're at. It's like I, I, I'm just trying to be as kind of fun and not not as fun as as vulnerable as possible. Thank you guys so much for coming. It, it really was this, this really was amazing. I appreciate that you guys got up so early in the morning and coming, especially after playing a show last night. No worries. This really was fantastic. This was a great discussion. I really oh, yeah, appreciate yeah. it so much. Thank you.